Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, innovating, and amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane. The one and only master propaganda here of like Defender of the Fatherland of Hitler 2v2 on Pekino Farmlands. North first, it is Kronosaurus and Colossius fighting here for the German army. Deutschland. Here with the 26th Panzer Schoen with combined arms and coastal reserves for a more Italian than usual opening here. In the southeast stands Havoc and 4 and one Petrol Lawnmo, we'll just call him Petrol. That's definitely the easiest one to say repeatedly. Fighting for America, freedom and democracy, standing tall with the 3rd Armored Division. So, off to the race are here, Petrol with straight up advanced infantry, leading the way, I imagine, down the road with the Rangers. No big surprise, we've got Coastal Service machine guns out there for Colossus. And we got Ken Kratz, or Bikes actually, out here for Kronosaurus. And Bersaieri. So, got the various mixed Italian troops here, joining up here by the Southern Point. As always, big hearty thanks to my patron supporters for continued generous and absolutely a wonderful support of the propaganda cast keeps making all these videos possible and big hearted to keep commenting and liking on them helps out immensely. Sounds side here, scouts, we're not going to catch those coastal service here, right from the other side. Light skirmishing here, quick ordering the sandbags to be not laid down and for some reason it has been forwards out to the open, which of course counts the entirety of laying down the sandbags in the first place. But there you go, Bessieri here, take advantage of the coastal service acting as target practice to flank up here. Nice coordination between Colossus and Kronosaurus. Thumbs up, the scouts have come by sheer Italian glory. As Italian civilians run away in the background. Glenn is flying up for Colossus. This is Ye rushing back as Rifle Rush forward. Spike, of course, riding machine gun fire support here in the center. Pioneers slightly clashing in with some other scouts there out of Grenadiers, Petrol. But Havoc in the south, he is finding his men oh, doing the opposite of Havoking. They're panicking. And they are withdrawing full right here from Havoc in the south, leaving only Petrol with any foot or feet on the front line. Up north, here we see here, Kronosaurus, Panzer Pionia, bit on their own, being surrounded by American forces, and they're swiftly forced to withdraw. Response, second best year score coming up here, but big win in the south here. From Deutschland and Italia. Rifleman being forced with the M1 Garant semi-automatic rifle, which used a somewhat unique a type of magazine, or well, a magazine, the clip was known as the end block clip. It was a bit unique in the sort of like, you know, block of ammunition rather than just, you know, stripper clip, which was the most armies use for the block of the rifles. In fact, rifling about here, north side has fallen here to Petrol, who's flying up with a mortar. This area, they're looking to sneak around here, south side, we can see there. Colossus hard at work laying down part wire, denying cover there to potentially Havoc or to Petrol. Sender there being slow to see the Germans, and we got here Kronosaurus switching his forces northwards here, looking to get more aggressively against Petrol. He's now going for grenades, so a very explosive approach here from Petrol, and we're all fairly solid, obviously. Havoc, of course, obviously it goes around a bit, but also appears to be very infantry. Based, though no sign of grenades. Maybe a faster take out of Havoc or fast pass. Meanwhile, Colossus actually rushed ahead here for the Panzer Gurney Company and is rushing up a 251 half track, the Mittler Schutzen Panzerwagen. Could very likely be for the Stummel. We'll have to see what it's go for, going for, but there's definitely been an increase in Stummels with certain high ranked players, so. I'm kind of anticipating it, but it could surprise us just with a regular middle of Schutzen Panzerwagen. Mark, it's mentioned for the zoning up here, half-track rushing south. This looked like no Stummel here. Oh, just as I said, of course, just in the very moment I say it doesn't look like he's going to go for it, of course he goes for it. I got bloody great timing, don't I? There you go, Stummel getting ready here up north. Scott's pulling back, Bezier moving about, Ravnall's moving in. He is finding cross various points, mortar at the ready. Bunker's being laid up here, that is gonna be a medic bunker there for Colossus. Emolt Stummel is almost ready there for the 251. One of the various versions of the 251 half pack. This would used to be a platform with various purposes, of course, depending on the gun mounted. One of the more common ones besides the machine was actually one mounting the Pack 37 
which was used for platoon leader vehicles. Fun fact. It was basically meant to like use the light vehicle, which was just for high explosive shells and infantry. Medic bunker upgrade on the way. Officers as well here for Colossus. Stuman joining in, right from the game bombarded by self propeller artillery here out of Colossus. Putting the pressure on the O to Havoc. Who's also gone for advanced infantry in a shocking moment, I know. And we got both of sec squads here for Kronosaurus. He's got Trill Bessier. He's going for the Arthrad. German force here definitely leading with a mechanized approach. Even as petrol is already looking to sign or deal with that medic bunker, pioneers are paying the ultimate price and repairing it. Might be an addition, maybe more with the Sturm to bombard the mortar. Who knows? Just engage it directly with infantry. Back at the American base, more infantry moving out. We got happening there with the infantry port center, a bit behind here. Petrol. Arcade right around the corner. Sturm advancing here. Officer supporting as well. There you go, bombarding the mortar with the Sturmel. Forcing a petrol draw his mortar too before he withdraws a stumped one. There you go, Akrat here out for Kronosaurus. Center, we're seeing more intensifying action here. A very aggressive approach on some right for the fast Sturmel. Obviously, not that first. Oh, we even get the buff here from the offset to like nearby units. Two thumbs up, which also, of course, boosts the Sturmel. Nido. And there you go, obliterates Paul Lewis. South side, break for here by Kronosaurus. And the Bezier supported by the Arctic here, routing the Rifleman. Captain holding up in the church here, south side, more Italian force rushing after the Rifleman, trying to go for that bike here. Arctic, of course, joining in, more Rifleman intercepting. Motor pool for Havoc. Do we have any motor pools here? Yes, we also get a motor pool for petrol. So it's a double motor pool move here by the Americans. Both hang going for advanced infantry, but it's worth noting we are so far not noting. Rangers are these gentlemen. But I would anticipate a lot of Rangers eventually. Later, model 30 is there for Colonel Saldo's best area as an upgrade now. Of course, going to give him a nice boost of firepower, and he's got two scores already equipped there with the Italian light machine gun. Noted it for being not particularly good there. Was over engineered and unreliable. Grenades off the rock and push back, which stands in contrast with otherwise excellent Italian small arms, but the Breda Modella 30 was very much the exception to the rule. Got the Mark II panel here and the MG42 pushing back, Sturm, of course, joining in, and again, it does provide just some nice utility here for uh, Kaloshes there. They bring up a bat, they need to blow smoke, and of course this blinding shot can also be used in a pinch versus light vehicles or, you know, heavier armor. So it does provide you with a lot of utility and a very, you know, highly mobile platform. So on the right hands, it doesn't just look cool, it also does some pretty cool stuff. So there you go, Grandia out for Havoc. We also got the ammunition storage. So interesting enough, he is, at least for this time being, not actually going to go for the Rangers. It appears like he's focusing on Howard's as Nemo, though. Petrol is absolutely going for the Rangers. Yeehaw. France, they're proving surface armored skirts and the fifth cal down the way. You need some way for havoc. And we got mines being laid down by the sound of it here for Kalosius. Back at the German base. Not much else there yet. I would not be surprised if Kalosius is just going to go straight for the Panzer Company. His strategy definitely has a bit that sense of a Panzer Company rush. Meanwhile, though, Chronosaurus absolutely. Not rushing for tanks, going for a second Achtard here, and of course in a pinch he can go for Italian armor. There go Rangers now being focused down here by German or light vehicle center cap there basically under heavy fire. North side we can see Chronosaurus trying to regain a bit there from Petrol. In the center, Petrol's captain is soon about to become posthumously promoted to major. Rain moving about, right moving about here, right there, taking heavy fire from various sources of artillery. And they bail out, but not before liberating the altar wine. Fuel cache up for the Germans, thumbs up, of course, provides both Kronosaurus and Kalosius with a bit of extra fuel. Yeah, Panzer Company rush there for Colossus, and we got Havoc here, in a sense, with a howitzer rush, which is definitely 
not the most common thing, but for 2v2s does kind of make sense. But there you go, M2 howitzer. This is the M1, it's the M2A1 howitzer. And now we hit a petrol. With his ammunition storage really there. Both gonna go for houses. Interesting. And Kalosha's Panzer Company almost done. And of course, will he then go for the Ubiche in return? But this sounds like, you know, just a massive artillery tube duel. I don't know. Houses here, of course. Because even if it was done, it's about possibly a run by the Arctic. So obviously, just cancels it. So does not end up finishing and then just gets destroyed by the Germans. Kalosha's with Star Swarpen. Two thumbs up. So far, Germans got a trouble cap here against the Allies. They're bleeding them out. They got the anti tank out there for petrol. Of course, alongside his Bazooka Rangers. Well, sending him a bit of oof. In fact, he's got three Bazookas on them and a barb. Plus two Thompsons. That's a bit of firepower there for various things there. Star Storm out here for Kalosius, the mighty Star Storm. Harden veterans. Arctar's again making another swing here, and we got something out here. It is, in fact, a pack 38. They're being towed to the front line as swiftly as possible as Cronus Aris' 250 half tech can carry it. Rangers dashing forts, only met with any four to find the Arctar's here. Lacking any other plans, of course, he's forced to quick withdraw. I imagine he was just home to get lucky there, but no such luck for Petrol Rangers. And he's moving straight ahead for the tank depot, so light vehicle presence and then it's tanking, but otherwise just going to be straight for tanks. I mean, not a bad idea. And no BG out of Kalosha since he's gone for coastal walls, so once his heart is do start singing, he might wish he'd actually gone for the other one. Maybe not. Going scoring a nice hit on the Stürmer. We have lost communication with one of our squads. And a unit there gets utterly obliterated. It's the Kupps to reserves. Victor points whilst the Germans are definitely still bleeding out now. They still have the lead over Petrol and Havoc here. Very quick engaging, getting off a good shot there on the Star Storm. In fact, they're very low on health. And yeah, Kalosha's there making really the only decision he can, but even here might prove to be too late. Oh, the pioneers got white. Certainly better than the stars from get white, but certainly either way, rather uncomfortable here for Colossus and pretty good there for Havoc. Until they're being called in, there's the area there kind of nearby, but Colossus needs to get that storm out of there before it gets wrecked, like the pioneers did. And there we go, we've got the M21 Howard's out there. We've got a Panda 4 for Colossus plus pioneers because he is going to need something to repair that Panda with. So, Howard's already here. Of course, I did fire, so there's certainly some good targets here. You got designated assault position and range weapon training here for petrol. But he's still staying at just the one range squad. Back at the German base, we actually got the Panzer Me Commando out there for Cornosaurus, so he might actually go for Panzer Seas. We, of course, could be thinking big and already like planning for armed reserves. Stummer though finally gets knocked out here. Sting and blow there to Colossus. Certainly a bit of relief there for the Allies as the Stummer was clearly you know adding some very uncomfortable pressure all the time there. So getting rid of that definitely does ease the day and fit finding on the field a bit for the infantry. So Colossus with his Panzer Company and Star Storm actually now goes for the support armor elements upgrade. Goes in Needle Airfus, probably in response to the Howitzer. Since again, he can't build a Howitzer of his own. He has to go for the Needle Airfus. He's got the ammunition supply here for Havoc. Make sure his guns are well supplied with artillery. Ammunition. This is always an important thing. It's also the thing that Americans rarely lacked. The only major issue was actually during uh, after the liberation of Western France, while in the success of Normandy, when they're pushing towards the German border, were at times for the logistics were not able to supply them with enough munitions, and so the frontline troops would at times be somewhat short on munitions for the artillery. But that was really the only case there. For the Germans, on the other hand, ammunition shortages were very common as the war went on. Rather push back in the center here. Rayhan going out, stops and they're getting blasted. Sherman on the way there for petrol. 
Saying to the American forces launch a fresh assault here looking to reclaim the town square here of Pechino from German and Italian forces. The Rangers spearheading the effort. Sherman almost down there for petrol. Okay, here starts to move me. Got rapid publications, got the support bunkers up here for Colossus now. Over here to Kronosaurus and to Havoc. Some Ventus as an option, but I doubt he's gonna actually call one in. I mean, he could. He could, but I doubt he will. And then he calls in the M1340. Thankfully, not probably wrong there. But it's still a bit interesting to see that one, considering he does have the Panzerme Commando. But I'm assuming he just wants some kind of armor up, still preserving resources for armor reserves. And the M1340 calling that since the serves as a metal ground. It's not quite a Panzer C, but it's still some armor. On the center, Sherman rolling 40, catching at some of the Italian troops here, but the Pack 38 supporting the Italians should help keep the Sherman a wee bit more honest. And we got Havig with a second Howard, sir. Okay, cancel that. Still, double houses does seem to be a thing he's legitimately thinking about. Certainly a bold move. Upgrading to a repair facility. And a repair bunker now following up here for Kalosius. Frontline wise, the Germans made a bit of progress in the north, and jumped up going for the victory point. The lead steadily eroding. Can't be bombarded. Italian troops, they're forced to withdraw there, simply put on a good condition. Southern Point is also falling to the Americans. And the fuel caches by extension also extended. And now we have a Neva here out for Colossus. And there you go, Akkad and M1340 here pursuing the Ralph Squad. Gonna go here for wipe on petrol. Good work there by Chronosaurus. Sherman and Rangers being dispatched here with this sudden threat on the northern flank. Uh, the 26th Panzer Division. Got mines being repaired here. Work there by Havoc, and he is once for making an attempt there for Howitzer. Further south, though, Havoc has made a more aggressive push here, catching the fuel cache. Spur starts from the country, attacking Havoc's assault, and he's going for the anti tank and crew here, being got popping the Stars assault here. Really ripping to those Americans, though, we see Havoc here respond to this with a grenade. You have three command points at your disposal. Fuel cache is about to go knocked out. That would certainly be a win there for the Americans. Pact of Steel now here for Chronosaurus, and then in a surprise twist, goes for another M1340. Considering he went for the Panzerme Command, I'm a bit surprised, you know, you know, going for multiple M1340s now. That definitely strikes me as a bit odd. At least considering, like, typical player pattern. I mean, the reason you go for like a lot of Italian tanks at this point is because these where's why I do it is that like my opponent had a lot of infantry, in which case just going for a lot of Italian tanks can deal with that. See if it's Rangers, they're sort of like a surprisingly decent counter, but the Rangers don't have like too many bazookas to just blast them at a fairly cost-efficient level. But so far, petrol really is, as far as I noticed, have one Ranger squad. I'm not entirely sure what's causing this double M1340 push here by Chronosaurus. It's certainly not what I'd recommend, per se. Not necessarily saying it's bad either, but it's tough to recommend, and I do think there are some big risks associated with going for the M1340s at this stage. Typically, the opponents all having tanks out. Greyhound's there for Havoc. Also, the Howitzer got cancelled again. He's busy fixing up the first one. Match is definitely having some unique moments, I think is the nice way to put it. Third M1340. Really unusual play here by Chronosaurus at this point. And again, I'm not entirely sure what the exact reason here is. I suppose it's just because the opponent hasn't gone for a lot of tanks, so just churning out M1340s is sort of viable, I guess. 
the M1340 was to see the main Italian medium tank that it would receive some upgrades throughout the war. The last model would be the M1542, which I didn't really have massive improved armor, did at least I think was welded, and more crucially, it actually have a higher velocity gun for better armor penetration. It was also primarily used by the Germans. And in fact, M some M1542s would actually see service in Budapest with the half and SS. And it was up north of Rangeman in M30. 40 they're engaging, Boyd moving with the Arctic heat, catching their petrol range in a bad spot. You can see a mixed mechanized armored platoon there charging in here, catching Helms Falls in a bad spot. Oh, Helms Petrols. Over here to Petrol, over to Colossus. Panther Walk Falls there, continuing to go for another one. We got more range now to Havoc, so certain M34s make slightly more sense, though obviously, as the Sherman's about, they are not excited for that risk either still. Now it's multiple ranger squads here, need no fire there, trying to silence here the howitzer, which is not ace level, landing direct hits here on the gun crew, making things very uncomfortable. North here, Italian Bessier rushing forwards, and we got another M1340 here, out for Chronosaurus. Definitely been a while since I've like, seen anything like that on the channel. Sarsat so, so Raft goes to the MD42. Mines exploding, Glennies, they're losing limbs and lives as they push that fuel point. Officers are trying to provide some support, but at this point it's mostly emotional. Jump rushing into the turn tanks, the armor pism rounds think are popping, not even with the armor pism rounds. The Sherman mostly stands strong here, Pantafire is doing more damage than the tanks. Surprisingly. Officer though, direct hit from the Howard to utterly obliterated. That's a good shot there for the Americans. Another new left cloches. Again, the Howard is really causing a incendiary response out of the German army. As they're looking to silence this howitzer, which is just doing immense work here at Attic so far. Right, brief check. He's actually gone for Yes, free fire drills. Of course, allows that how to really fire a lot. The range moving in, backed up with the Sherman. We do have a panther on the flank, and he push it past that. Yeah, he's going to get shot in the side. We've got to pack 30 cover, eight covering the other flank. The Zuka teams that are having here. Interesting choice, but there you go. Italian tanks laying down the law of Italy, of Rome. Overtaking out that Bazooka team. Charging in there. The Duchess Armored Fist there pursuing them aggressively. Shan moving up. And further south, starts from caught in the bad spot with the Rangers and are quick dispatched here. Got 283 with 341. Germans still have the lead, but that lead is looking a lot less impressive right now. More new weapon barrages. Again, more attempts here to silence Havoc's Howard set. The South here, Pioneers in trouble with the Raptor Squad. And there you go, another push here by Bonasaurus. On the side was once will find his M1340, not doing much yet to the Sherman tank. Nothing in front of the out guards. We got bunkers out there for Colossus. Another one. Guessing another repair bunker. I don't think it's going to be another command bunker. This could also be a pack bunker to be honest. The south though. Colossus troops here spearheaded by the mighty stars from catch here. Some hag southern forces in an incredibly sticky pickle here. And the anti tank crew ultimately goes down. We've got rangers flying. We've got two ranger squads after Havoc. Moving in, we got the Star Storm going to the ECC, grenading. And the force supporting, but they go quickly bypassing. Grenade assault here, forcing a swift retreat there. The fight for the center continues here. Ruthlessly and without mercy. More than fire here on the Howard set, which either got completely destroyed or built, but just be crude. Hard to say there. South side. Fresh push here by having or continue to push. Unraveling here the summon flank here. And we got a second star some squad if Glocious, two thumbs up. Wonderful to see, unless you're the opponent. 
Over to Havoc here. And over here to Chronosaurus. Italian tanks to the rescue. And a new level crew expires here due to a mortar that got pretty close to airburst. The mortar crew there. Thumbs up to Petrol. Meanwhile, the Italian armored festival continues to throw back American Rangers. As well, American tanks are clearly not intimidated by them. If you're not a tank, the M1340 can still be a massive looming threat. Shot there. What fire there on the M1340s? Out to there, slowly being burned down to the ground. We September that shrimp swing force got multiple shrimps out of petrol the here. Now the howitzer for havoc. Truly, he believes in the howitzer. The plural at this point soon. Sherman knocked out here, petrol's tank left burning as the petrol catches on fire. Another bunker there for Colossus. The enemy have taken our territory. Heavy machine gun bunker here. Something else entirely, who knows? Santa Mort seems on the mortar as it creeps over forwards. Machine gun bunkers come in the flank actually. And there you go, two of Star Storm Squads Star Storm moving in. South side here, Havoc in a standoff with a lot of Italian tanks and German armoured cars here. Havoc possibly wondering which patch this is. There you go, into tank guns being decimated as the Italian tanks heroically dash forwards. Overturning Havoc's carefully laid out defenses. Leading his howitzer to expose here to the might of Ilducci, except no, he withdraws. He does not actually go within distance to finish him off here. 271 versus 318. Got stuff being air dropped here. More new by the fire here. Havoc's engineers are being roasted as they're trying to repair the howitzers, could go down here. North side by the way, completely forgotten it seems by both sides entirely as there's no one doing anything up there. How it's the crew, but still sort of there. Of course it might be in need of a good wash before they start firing it. Rangers advancing, M1340 is firing back. Starstorm getting mauled. Power tank to take him out here. Meanwhile, Ace Rangers moving forward. The bazookas laying down heavy fire against any German armor vehicle. Italian tanks are doing what they can to stop them with their machine guns and their main guns. The center they're being grabbed in the north side continues to be terra incognita almost. Back here, the base of the Germans remains a bit silent. And we got another M1340 here out of Chronosaurus. Just more Italian tanks. And fresh artillery barrages here against the powers above the Nietwerfers. Steady advances, we got more Germans out of petrol. No Hellcats for him, no sir. Starts when they're going for the center point, and again, no attempt from the north still by the Germans. Catching in the lone scout squad in the south, the Italian tanks are able to swiftly and efficiently dispatch an egg. Neil Levers firing at something else besides the howitzer, and actually catching a lot of petrol support weapons, incinerating both an anti tank crew and a mortar crew there in an absolutely incendiary storm. Range beam being spotted here. The Suga team shams are nearby to assist. Akta catching some of the fire here as well. North here, fresh barrage you see around 
and lose his possessions, popping back to him and to Petrol. Results are going for Howard, sir. We're back to two Howardses now, though this time one for each player. Rather than just Havoc parking all the Howardses like he's got a Howard's a Monopoly. And there, good just artillery fire, decimating the German rear line. Support weapons are being crushed, and it is. And stars are suffering excruciating casualties. Fresh munitions, ammunition supply here from Havoc. Ammunition storage. Now they're pentacle for Kaluches. There's some armored side skirts. Could also be a pretty good upgrade here. South side, the Italian art tanks are on the move again. On the north side, it seems like Kronosaurus finally remembered that, you know, tales told by his grandfather too when he was a small child that they existed on northern Victory Point, you can actually grab. South side, American forces sweeping in there, Rangers supported by countless bazooka teams as Havoc is an old bazooka man. And there you go, Howitz's, or Havoc's Howitz is somehow surviving. The constant and incendiary sentences. You know, bombardments by the need levels, but ultimately the crew has to give up since even Kogan and apparently Nesbestos can't allow them to survive that long. Maybe it was the cancer. Up north, he's Sherman dashing in, supported by Rangers and Riflemen. Shift move here to counterattack there. You got Pat Bunkers coming the center as well here. German Suhan now have a triple cam against the Allies, 234 to 285. How to once more recruit and being repaired. Enemy and we got Petrol with the another howitzer point. yet again. Moving up to a total of three howitzers. Enter tank crews there. Being cleared up right from the dying in the streets of Bikina. Rangers, though, are flanked to light up those German tanks. But they fall a bit short of the desired goal and ultimately forced to withdraw. There goes Shemsu Pack Bunker, though. Well positioned to cover the main streets of Bikino. Immediately shoo away the Sherman. The enemy has a 200 points bee that had gotten into the house and couldn't find its way out again. Our stars to them being hammered by the Shermans. Got 194 to 185. Italian and American troops are just pissy grabbing each other's munition sports, like more in the victory point there for the Germans. And we got Kaloches with another bunker, this time the one that can be rapidly built to cover the sun victory point. Positions in the center west are still very much being targeted by over eager American artillerymen. Then again, which American artilleryman isn't eager about doing his job? I don't know. Scouts here, they're being met with Italian tanks and further, and are absolutely torn apart for them even a chance to get back towards America. Nibla for exterminated. Enter tank crews also expiring here under heavy and never ending American artillery fire. 175 to 185. Support weapons are being. Shattered, as though they were made out of brittle glass. Then again, compared to Hunter Farm and Howitzer, most things are. Might as well be. Stars from counterattack in the center. American forces absolutely well, but some of those stars from definitely need to withdraw. And there you go. Massive Allied charge here. Italian tanks rushing in. Could go straight for the Howitzers and knock them out. We could just stop up and just withdraw again. So it's the Star Storm was tagging to the howitzers. It seems fairly risky. Oh, there by the Shams, that's going to be, I think, a white there on Kalosha Star Storm. Yes, painful blow there. That was definitely not an ideal white there. This, of course, caused you allies, but the Germans, that was pretty bad. Still no armored side skirts. More entertainments of petrol and more houses as Havoc goes for a second one himself again. So that means the Allies are not looking at a total of 
four howitzers. Which is a fair amount of howitzers for any match. We have secured the advantage. 100 points left. Bunker cracks there, and we got 95 to 85 here. Range has been and forced Neva off. Neva team, team number two expires again. The other one was at ace level. But yeah, now Kamosh is taking like massive casualties. He's lost so many units. And his second Neva for all to perish beneath just this absolute orchestra here of high explosives that the Allies have managed to put together. Like a bunch of Texans getting ready for, you know, a nice little birthday party. And they got another M3040 here out of Kronosaurus in a bit of a surprise move. They're putting up tough total of five of these things. Oh, to Havoc with triple rangers, two howitzers, two bazooka teams, two engineers, and a captain. Got 88 was 273 here. Nibla, they're just trying to snuff these out. The problem is at this point for the Germans, it's just too many howitzers for the Nibla's like just be able to do the job without just getting, you know, shattered by the near incessant artillery barrages. Like I'm a bit surprised here that, you know, he keeps trying at it. Considering again, the sheer number of howitzers that the allies have. And Kaloshes there of course finds both of his mortal crews once more ripped from this very mortal coil there. And there you go. Both Nibla's about to be destroyed here as well. Leaving Kaloshes with no real artillery then. Even up northeast, Sherman's getting classed with heavy fire. We got Rangers intercepting and interceding here. Uh, themselves now becoming the target of this veritably lightly armored fleet of death and destruction. And the Center Havoc continues to export the gaps against the German lines. As the German lines are very much collapsing here. Safe to say the Navy has proved to be a not to ideal counter to an increasing number of howitzers. Up north here, like a swarm of locusts. The M1340 depends upon the Sherman and causes it to explode. 88 plus 253. Starts being hunted down here. Our front line failed. Starts and they getting grenaded. Rain is finally pushed back, but. Situation here for the German army for the 26 tons of strong remains. Rather uncomfortable. We got two Panda Force out for Colossus. Got to fight on the Italian tanks. And looks like most of them do escape here. Not all of them. This looks like an Arcot went down. There you go. Panda Force going for the houses. Finally, Germans just decided to do this a bit more practically. Practically, and just use the Panda Force for this job. Of course, the Bazooka team does make it a bit tough here, particularly without the armored side skirts. Of course, a bit late here for this solution to have better success. And there go two Panda Force down as Kalosius overcommitted the Panzers without anything to like really deal with all these Rangers or all these Bazookas. So, German players definitely slipping up a bit more here. The stakes are starting to crop up here a bit more actively. And of course, the allies just building up so many rangers and howitzers. Of course, they're not hitting the situation either. And Kronosaurus just goes for another M1340, pushing up to now again five, but he's got no other vehicles left. Havoc with a little mission package. Likely to demo charge calls with the anti tank mines, obviously. Rangers was the M1340C. So many guns firing at them. The Rangers have finally overcome by a sense of self preservation. Meanwhile, the Italian tanks pursuing they're trying to get a wide pit since any Ranger right, right now would certainly relieve a fair bit of pressure from the German shoulders. Yeah, shoulders. But unfortunately, here with Chronosaurus, the opportunity slips through his hands. 88, let's do 
Axis forces still bleeding out in terms of victory points. Over to Petrol. And over to Colossius. Who's got next to nothing left now? Mercer's Reeves has been invested into bunkers, so just being steadily eroded. He's going for Sturm Panzer IV, but otherwise, most of what Colossius has is just gone by now. And certainly one argument we had is like, you know, your opponent just keeps going for more and more howards, so you really shouldn't be building more and more bunkers. It definitely feels like Colossus misjudged the situation a bit extensively. Could he turn the game around? It's not impossible. The odds alone victory points of Germans not so much. Not quite as hard as used to be either. And comparatively, Pronosaurus hasn't suffered as many heavy losses, but... Obviously, strategy is not ideal either. German Italian forces making that push in the center here. Slamming the Allied lines. Pursuit Rangers there catching the Sturm Panzer, scoring some great hits. Just the howitzers just constantly laying down heavy barrages. Two of them are ace level. Further south, the Grenier starts from Pioneers. They're all in a clash. The Grenier's are forced back packing here, but the stars from the Pioneers stand their ground in the face of the American war machine, at least until the tanks arrive. Petrol has also suffered some losses, but is worth noting nowhere near as extensive as Colossus. It really means Colossus isn't a top spot. Like, he's lost so many crucial units, and again, it hasn't helped these ventures so many resources into bunkers, and again, against opponents who are just building more and more houses, which of course means those houses become increasingly less worth it, basically become a worse and worse investment. Which I think is a key part to understanding why Colossus is kind of in such a bad position now. There's just way too much being invested into various bunkers. I'm not saying Colossus shouldn't build bunkers at all, but the sheer number he built, I think, was very much unnecessary as more and more houses were being applied. Another Sturm Panzer IV for Colossus. Bunker down. That was the repair bunker. Another Sturm Panzer feels a bit like an odd choice. I'm going to get it with all the infantry and the rangers, but I do think petrol Germans should not be underestimated either. And undeterred, what happened to pretty much every other bunk he's built at this point, except a few, he builds another bunker. He's barely got any units. Yet Colossus he seems determined just to build more targets for the American Harrises. I do think this is not ideal play there by Colossus. I would certainly not recommend constantly build more and more bunkers when your opponent's got so many Harrises. At least it appears they got destroyed. One of petrols by now, but that's still like three houses left for the Americans compared to four. M34 to hit some mines to make it worse here at Fort Kronosaurus. That was his ace M3040, so that was his best. best. Losing that one certainly be more painful than losing any other. Grenadier Squad out, meaning Kelos is down just one Pioneer Squad, one Star Storm, and then two Sturm Panzers. Right, he is only hectic. We got 84 versus 148. Allies still beating out the Germans, but the pace has slowed down notably here. Italian tank charging got the ace one here. Armor pits around being popped. We got more Shermans nearby here. Bazooka team rangers moving up. Sherman down though, torn apart by pack and Italian tank fire here. But the Rangers keep coming and going. Got more range now for Petrol. Even though we're going in the center. Big push for the Rangers. Tanks there scattering. Rangers getting absolutely hammered here. And one tank goes down. But there's still plenty to go here for Bronosaurus. Armored side scratch for Colossus John Panzers. Even as he's about to lose his remaining Pioneers and Star Storm. Meanwhile, fresh pressure here from Petrol in the south. Looking to hit that soft German Italian underbelly here. Ring is though being slaughtered here. 
as the Italian tank sends on to the sense weakness, they pounce upon them like a pack of chihuahuas. And the Ranger squad gets crushed. As Chronosaurus scores that one kill here on petrol. Back to Chronosaurus. Back to Havoc. Havoc easily the one with the strongest. And he's also built another house. This is up to three houses now. An insane amount of houses. But again, considering how the gems are playing, it does make sense. I mean, in particular, again, Kalochis just keeps building bunkers. Which, again, if you've got a lot of houses, it just means he keeps feeding your houses. I do think all these bunkers at this stage is definitely a significant miscalculation by Kalochis as to what the hell is actually going on in the battlefield. Captain Rangers on the move, up north here, right from moving in towards the center. Stormpants, it starts to moment. we got the pack fed hanging back. And all of a sudden here, Chronosaurus has just been so focused on the M1340, still apparently found the time to save up for a Tiger tank. Ah! Two thumbs up. Stormpants are drumming into DPS, getting engaged from all sides here by American firepower. Starts to push they have back. M1340's moving up, but at this point it seems like it's all up to Chronosaurus with his Italian tank swarm and his Tiger tank. His Tiga. <laughs> South side here, Panzer Pure and Southwards. Bit of quiet there for once. 54 versus 104. North side continues to just, you know, be very quiet. There you go, Rangers once more meet your target practice here for the Italian tanks. We've got a house that have been used, so I think, try and keep the German tanks from occupying too much space here at the front line. Italian tanks again having the bazookas again. So many bazookas that are having Tiger tanks. Jump punch moving in. It's a massive armored punch here from the Germans. Hard to fight is causing havoc. Storm Panthers can't do that part, but they're getting steadily pushed as well. We got another one in the center there, and of course, artillery in the center to keep the Germans getting that point. We got 54 versus 84. Allies have almost caught up to the Germans here. Sounds like it. Got the town troops versus the Rangers. South side here, Rangers forced off. We got 54 versus 66. Storm Panzer keeps it out. Rangers almost getting knocked out here. And Niebuhr again here for Kalosius. It's fine again at this point. Evidence should be clear. There's an awful lot of howitzers, and the howitzers are doing a better job countering Niebuhr than the Niebuhr is doing of countering them. I feel like again, Kalosius here is unfortunately. Not quite playing the same game a bit here. There you go, direct hit from how to wipes it. I mean, I get like he needs weapons and bunkers, but sometimes you at least need to adjust somewhat to make it work. And in this case, it feels like Colossus is just not compromising at all. Certainly, there's something beautiful in that, but sometimes when your men are exploding, you may want to consider, you know, you may just mildly adjust things. Start some guard the center here. Can crowd out for Kalosha's this late into the game. The enemy has taken a victory point. Rangers being ripped apart here. The SEA squad pushes very limits. The feathers ragged and floppy. In the center, another Ranger squad. How to fire there. And the Stars from Kalosha's remaining Stars from squad explodes. We've got another Italian tank out here for Chronosaurus. 50 is for one. The Alice back to you. We're the Germans now. Jump Hunter keeps blasting. Eager doing what he can, which admittedly is not too much at this point, it seems like. At least, his, at least the way he's playing it. Tiger advancing here. Jump Hunter, Italian tanks descending. One absolute 
Brutal armor push into the center. Infantry getting scattered all over the what remains of the town center of Pekino. And in the south, M3040 base of the Cat Bazooka team. Got 29 versus 41. Back to Petro. Back to Colossus, who's now going for a mix of what this and that. Almost got the howitzer there, but even then he's to destroy it. 26 to 39. All three points now neutral. Northern one there being fortified about it. Well, fortified, but certainly heavily defended. Strong Panthers again pulling forts here. Trying to clear the way of Americans. We've got so many bazookas there from the Rangers just being unleashed out there. So many bazookas. Sturm Panzer is about to get knocked out by that. And the Sturm Panzer is kaput. D gun the move. We got 26 versus 21. Ranger squad though does absolutely explode here. Though we've got so many Rangers out of the Allies at this point. So many Rangers. Have secured our territory from us. 26 was 19. Absolutely brutal match here. Casualties are pretty high here. I mean, just on petrol and Colossus side. We're steadily approaching the 300 mark. I mean, for Havoc, it's uh, well, roughly on the same side. So yeah, oh, we've got 200 kills here for uh, Chronosaurus. So we're probably overall close to uh, 600 casualties. Which is a fair amount. 17 versus 19 here. Rangers charging in. Strong punches again here for Colossus. Machine gun bankers it up. In the south, the Italian tanks fire off the range. Got 17 versus 17, 15. Ranger squad wiped out there. Can the Germans get another victory point? Can they remember that the North exists? But they just refuse to acknowledge it. And now charging all on the center here. Even if they can capture the Rangers, they need to block it. Three, three points. One point. There you go. GG. And game over. That was definitely brutal but yeah i definitely felt like there was a bit of a disconnect by colossus as to what was going on and what he was doing and i'm not saying he shouldn't at all build bunkers and needle vefers but when the opponent's just got so many houses which are eminently suitable for dealing with it he should probably find another way to counter them ex instead of presenting them with the perfect targets for the houses additionally there's also just this like in you know, north side they kept forgetting about it. i do think that was a massive mistake by the axis as well there it really just gave the Allies so much free real estate, made it much easier for them to concentrate across a smaller part of the map. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. You learned something from it. If you did subscribe, like, share, comment, tell your friends, tell your family. As always, you can support the Pablo by donating our Patreon. Patreon. This is Imperial Scene Cheers, and see you all tomorrow for the last episode. Bye, everyone.